In this presentation, we're going to look at the log normal distribution. And claim amounts arising from a certain type of insurance policy are believed to follow a log normal distribution. 1,000 claims are observed, and the following summary statistics are prepared. Now, most, in many cases, uh, information like that would be very important, but as it turns out, it's not. It's a bit of a red herring in this particular instance. Anyway. The mean claim amount is 230, the standard deviation is 110, the lower quartile Q1 is 80 and the upper quartile Q3 is 510. Fit a log normal distribution to these claims, this data set, using the method of moments and then the method of percentiles. And then just compare the fitted distributions from part A just to see how, how they work with each other, okay? So here we have a tables, a set of uh, formulae here. Uh, the key things we want in this particular instance are as follows. We want the mean, and we want the, the var uh, variance, which is the standard deviation squared, okay? Now those are the two key ones that we'll be using in the for the calculation with regard to the method of moments. And I'll, we'll discuss that shortly. Uh, just as a quick remark, this is just actually how we would do the method of uh, percentiles. So it's essentially, this is the definition of a log normal random variable, okay? And if we're using the method of percentiles, essentially we transform this expression here, we just get the log of both sides, okay? And using Z scores, which we should be familiar with, okay? The key to the Z score here is plus or minus 0 0.6745, okay? Uh, that does mark out the, the first and third quartiles of the standard normal distribution, okay? So essentially, the log of Q1 should equal that, mu minus 0 0.6745 sigma, and likewise, the log of Q3 should equal to that. Okay, we'll come back to that one later on, but I just want to explain where the uh, 0 0.6745 comes from. It's just a z-score corresponding to 25%. Anyway, method of moments. Here we go. So the mean is the uh, the parameters of the log normal distribution are the normal mean mu. Now that's not the mean for the log normal distribution, okay? So, it's, uh, so here it's just a parameter name, okay? And sigma, okay? Now they do relate to the normal distribution that the log normal distribution will be connected to, but in this case, it's not the same thing as the mean and uh, standard deviation. So we have the exponential of mu plus sigma squared over 2. Let me just write that out there. Okay, just in shot there. Is 230. Okay, that's what we're told. The variance is exponential of 2 mu plus sigma squared times the exponential of sigma squared minus 1. Okay, and that should equal to 110 squared. Okay, that's the variance. Okay, just watch out for that little trap. Variance and standard deviation. Okay, now the method of moments is essentially, just look at this expression here. What is 2 times, or this the square of the uh, expected value. So the expected value of, that's e to the power of a, when you square that, that's e to the 2a. Now here I'm just sort of reminding you about the laws of exponentials, okay? So essentially, this is the expected value of x squared, okay? So the variance is related to the uh, expected value of x squared by this formula here, okay, or a rearrangement of this formula. Anyway, what I'm getting at here is that this is the method of moments. We divide the variance by the expected value to be squared. We end up with the exponential of sigma squared minus 1, 
OK. And we can solve for sigma squared, and then from that we can find out what mu is. So the exponential of sigma squared minus 1 is the variance divided by the expected value to be squared, 110 squared divided by 230. That works out to be 0 0.2287. Add 1 to both sides, OK, the, the, expected, uh, the exponential of sigma squared equals 1.2287. Get the log of both sides, okay? That works out to be sigma squared equals 0 0.2059, and that means sigma equals 0 0.45385, okay? From that, you can work out what sigma or mu should be, okay? Little bit of work there, just uh, uh, put it into one of the expressions there. Uh, the simplest one will be the mean. Uh, so just work that backwards there. Uh, the exponential of mu plus sigma squared divided by 2 equals 230. That is the exponential of mu times this expression here. And, and that is equal to that. Okay, just remember your log laws. Get the log of both sides, mu plus 0 0.2059 divided by 2. That's equal to the log of 230. And... That's a bit of an extra line there we don't need. Working it out, mu should be equal to 5.3351. Okay, so that's the answer to the first part. That is mu, and previously we had sigma, which was equal to this here. Okay, mu and sigma. Now, using the method of percentiles. So I'll just go back up to this here. It's a very straightforward uh, calculation here. It's the exponential of mu uh, plus or minus, I'll just bundle them up into one, six, seven, four, five, and that is equal to Q1 or Q3, depending if it's plus or minus, okay? So, uh, this is Q3, this is Q1, okay? Q3 is 510. So the exponential of mu plus 0 0.6745, that is 510, uh, minus, that is 80, okay? So what we're going to do here is get the logarithm of both sides. Essentially what we're going to do is add them, okay, and add them, those expressions there, and get the log of both sides, okay? So we have that there, that should be a minus there actually, okay? So... The exponential, the log of that exponential is simply mu plus 0 0.6745. The log of that is mu minus 0 0.6745, okay? Those two terms cancel out, okay? So what we left it is mu and mu, mu plus mu, that's two mu. And that is equal to the log of 510 plus the log of 80, okay? And that works out to be 6.2344 plus 4.32. 3820 that means mu in this case is going to be equal to 5.383082 okay working that out you should be able to find that sigma will be equal to 1.373145 uh, 315 uh, just as a remark i go a little bit excessive sometimes in decimal places actually i'm just sort of using um a computer programming language which gives me them to six decimal places you don't have to do that i just do uh add it keep the number of decimal places up so you just know how close you are to the answer okay so that's the second approach that's using the method of percentiles now you notice that the uh, that that's the what we get with the method of percentiles now in the first instance you notice that that is not that close to what we got with the method of moments Okay, now if this was to be a log normal distribution, our answers there should be fairly similar to one another. So we should be getting a value of mu close to what we got previously, which is, um, let's just go up there, what was it? 5.33, well, it's actually not far off in that case. So mu is fairly close in both instances. But what about sigma? Well, here sigma is one3 three seven three one five and is that close to zero point four five three eight five not really 
Now, what we are to draw from that is that this is not really a log normal distribution. Okay, we're trying to fit it as a log normal distribution, but it's not a log normal distribution. What we can do there is just actually put in the values from one um, method uh, into the other, the formula for the other. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is our solution to the method of moments. Put it into the method of percentiles. There should be a minus there. Sorry, a minus. There's a okay. So 5.335 minus 0 0.6745 times 0 0.545. Okay, so just to clarify what that error is, there should be a minus there, there's a plus there, there should be a minus there. Okay, now when we calculate that out, we get 282. And we calculate this one out, we get 153. Now what we observe is 510, this is the data we're given, and 80. So that's Q1 and Q3, or Q3 and Q1. Okay, so that sort of says this is not really looking good if we're trying to fit a log normal distribution. Okay, you can do the same thing here. Put in the values. This is a little bit trickier now. Put in the values that we derived from the method of percentiles and put them into the formula for the mean and the standard deviation and the variance. And again, we do not get answers close to what we expect. Okay. So in that instance, we sort of find that this is not fitting well as a log normal distribution. So that's good. We'll leave it there.